Should you work with your spouse? That is a great question uh, that somebody recently asked me this past week. And so I want to kind of do a bit of a deep dive on that topic. Should you be working with your spouse? And what are some guidelines to really make it work? So let's say you're thinking about it. You're going to love this video. Or let's say you already are working with your spouse. Uh, then I want you to also be listening to these. I'm going to give you five tips. And this, this topic is super dear to me because um, if we haven't met, my name is Dr. Karen. I'm the co-founder of DK Leadership and our leadership coaching program called Success Intelligence. And I actually am partnered with my husband, both in, in business and in life. And so this is a topic that's very dear to me. And a lot of the companies that we actually work with are small business, kind of like that five to 50 to 100 employee range. And so we work with a lot of family businesses, a lot of entrepreneurs that um, that are working with their spouse. And so, and our whole thing as a company is we want, um, we love to teach systems to both families as well as organizations. And we really want to make sure that we're helping businesses thrive and grow their business, but not at the expense of their marriage. Okay. And that is kind of with what has really kind of positioned us, I think, pretty unique in this space is we want businesses to grow and we want marriages to thrive. We want both. And is it possible? It is possible. But as I said to my client earlier, you have to be very purposeful and very strategic about it. So we're going to dive into it. I'm going to give you five things. And um, just before we dive in, just in terms from a business systems, again, if you're a business owner, an entrepreneur, um, Maybe you're a senior leader in a business, an organization, and you're actually working with your spouse. You'll, again, I think you're going to find this uh, this video really helpful. And just as a, a quick little uh, a sheet to kind of like go through in terms of best practice, we've got a fabulous one pager in terms of how do you actually grow your business. So if that is of interest for you, uh, just write below business, business, and somebody from our team will actually send that to you. And it's like a one pager about how do you accelerate and grow your business. And that will be a wonderful framework as we're actually talking specifically about whether or not you should work with your spouse. All right, so here we go. Five tips, everybody. Five tips. The first one is you need to really know yourself. And I will be very honest. Again, I'm speaking both as a professional in this as well as somebody who's actually in it. Um, if not for everybody. And you know, we have, I try to really say this to a lot of our clients, it is not for everybody. Some people do really well working with their spouse and other people, they would kind of like destroy each other, you know, uh, unintentionally. It's not going to be good for them. So you, I think your first tip is you've got to really have self-awareness. You know, is this going to be a good thing for me? What kind of person do I actually kind of like to work with? Do you think, is this going to be good kind of for our business? Is this going to be good for our marriage? Um, do I like their working styles? Do I like in terms of what, what skills they bring to the table? So just that'd be kind of my first um, tip for, for everybody to really think about is know yourself, know your partner, and realize that it's not for everybody and that's okay. All right. There's not a, there's not a, you know, you're somehow your fail, your failure in your marriage if you can't work together. No, it's not. It's a very different Working together in a business is a very different relationship than working as in a partnership in a marriage. It's different. It's similar, but it's different. Okay. And so that's my first tip is just have grace on yourself, have real grace on yourself and realize it's not for everybody. Number two, um, and this is going to kind of go to the one pager uh, that I referenced is let's say you're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm, we're thinking about this. We're seriously thinking about this. Then the second thing is you want to be really, really clear around the clarity because this is just best practice for business get really clear in terms of your goals that you want to be focusing in on um, as well as the financial piece according to those goals again this is interesting with when you're an employee of a company obviously there's a fixed amount there's there's a salary we kind of know in terms of what money we're playing with with entrepreneurship and business it's that's not the case you know revenue can go up it can go down you've got payroll you've got expenses uh, sometimes, uh, you know, spouses and, and partners will have very different ideas in terms of whether or not they should be investing money and spending money. How much risk should we be taking? Should we like put everything, you know, in this? Should we kind of be holding some back? And so you want to really get clear on what your level of, what, certainly with what the goals are and what your level of risk is in terms of, as it relates to the finances. 
that you need to get clear on. Is there an alignment? Do you have a sense of peace with that? And if you don't, then I would really caution you before you kind of take the next step. So if you have clarity on the goals and you've got clarity on your level of risk and you've got clarity in terms of the finances and how that's going to kind of fit into short and long term, then you're kind of ready for the, the third step. But again, these are all just things to think about, everybody. Things to think about. And again, if you need to get that one pager, just write, write down business below and somebody from our team will send that to you. So that's tip number two. Tip number three, everybody. Tip number three is let's say you're like, okay, Karen, we we know ourselves, we know each other, we've got clarity in the goals, we're in alignment in terms of the level of risk and finance, finances, we're ready to go. Okay, so now the next one, again, this is good business practice. You want to then really figure out in terms of your, your strengths and clarify the roles. You know, one of the things that I find the most interesting with family business or couples that work together, um, or actually even like small businesses, is how few businesses actually write out their their role and their responsibilities. Their role with what they're accountable with what they're responsible for and accountable for. A lot of times in when we're hiring family members, we can't we can be a little bit sloppy. We don't have a description. We don't know who's responsible for what. We don't know what the title is. You know, we kind of like, we get really sloppy. And with, when family is involved, okay, when family is involved, and this actually applies to even if you're like hiring your kids in the business, we can do a whole other talk on that. But for right now, you know, the second that you've got a family member that's actually working in the business, you've got, um, there's an emotional uh component to it okay and so so that's why you want to be even more careful and more clear in terms of here's the job description and here's in terms of with with what is it, who's going to be doing what so when you're thinking about again partnering with your spouse or how you know working together as a as a couple in your business you want to get really clear as i said number two is on the, the goals and the finances but the third one is get really clear on what is your strength what is my strength and let's really figure out in terms of our title and our role and then with what we are actually responsible for so there's real clarity this piece has been huge for my husband and i um I, you know, we're both uh, health uh, professionals, uh, really kind of emerge in terms of the whole leadership development space. Our company has significantly grown. And this is something that we really had to kind of like lean into is that to get really clear around the laneway. I call it laneways. You don't want, you don't want people to be jumping into each other's lane because if you jump into each other's lane, you know what happens? You get collisions. Okay. So you don't want collisions. You want clean lines, you want clean boundaries. And so that's what happens when you've got clarity in terms of the roles and the responsibilities, who's actually doing what. And that just makes everything just sing. It just, everything just kind of moves so beautifully. And there's such an incredible alignment when people have clarity in terms of, of that. Um, okay, so that's number three. Number four, everybody. Uh, number four, and this is a big one. I strongly recommend all of these. Okay. And by the way, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, if you've got another topic you would like me to cover, make sure you share it with me, um, below in terms of what other topics you would like. The next one, uh, everybody, number four is around test drive. If you're really thinking about this, um, put it, test drive your theory before you're kind of saying, yes, we're going to quit our jobs. We're going to become partners in this. Um, test drive your theory. Like, you know, let's, let's try this out. Can let, let's try this out for the next 30 days. Let's try this out for the next, you know, three to six weeks. Uh, maybe let's try, try this out for two weeks. Think about with what, uh, what, what the time would be that you would allow you to really give it a, a shot in terms of what would be to test drive your theory. And I've had a lot of clients over the years where I've recommended that. And they've said to me after, Karen, that was like the best tip because after you test drive it for like three weeks, you're like, oh my goodness, this is not a good idea. They have a working style that's so different than mine. Um, I, you know, they're, they're, I love them as my spouse. I don't like in terms of working with them. And so I've had lots of clients over the years that once they've tested, once they test drive it, they realize it's actually not a good fit. So I strongly recommend anywhere from I say two weeks to about six weeks, test drive working together and then, and then, and then have a conversation about it. You know, what did you like? What didn't you like? You know, do, do we like this? Okay, then let's do another test drive. Maybe we do the next test drive for like three months. 
Okay. And if that works, so, okay, let's create. Should we do it like for another six months? Give yourself exits because nothing is worse than a person that kind of like signs up for this and realizes like, Hey, I don't know how to get out. So definitely test drive your theory, everybody. And the last one, uh, really quick. And again, we've probably all heard, uh, different, uh, videos and read different articles about this, but it's really, really important. This is really important for everybody, but especially people who are actually working together with their spouse is you have to get really clear. And this is hard, really clear in terms of your boundaries, but when you are working together in the business and when you are actually working and communicating as a couple in your marriage, you've got to get clarity on that. So for example, uh, and again, this is just an example, just to kind of give you some ideas. My husband and I, we actually, uh, this is something that we've actually started really the last year where we started running together. Actually as a family, we're actually all running now. And we have actually really quite love. We'd love to have meetings at certainly the beginning of the day. So instead of, you know, I know walk and talks are super popular right now with a lot of teams. We actually do run and talk. So we actually do a running and our business meeting in the morning before we kind of like, you know, really technically, it's almost like our pre-meeting before we kind of launch the day. And it's fantastic. A, we're getting kind of physical exercise and we're outside in nature and all of that. But it's kind of like in terms of high level, what's actually happening. So we'll do a pre-meeting before our work, if we still have to actually have to obviously kind of go over um, different goals and metrics and all that, we'll still kind of meet first thing in the morning. But if it's just kind of more of a high level, we'll actually do it through running. Um, so it's kind of with when it starts. Work hours, we'll kind of fire back each other into whether it's calls or meetings uh, and texts. And then a lot of times we'd love to kind of wrap up the end of the day for work at about four o'clock where we kind of, in terms of just things that have been happening throughout the day, we can kind of chat about it, uh, make some decisions and then come about five o'clock, that door closes and we kind of shift gears to husband and wife. Um, this has been super helpful for us as a couple. Now, that's not going to work for everybody. And again, I'm just sharing with you ideas. And I think the biggest thing is you want to kind of think about your own business, your own relationship, and with what you think is going to be the best fit. I like to teach principles, but you want to kind of apply the principles in different ways. But my encouragement is you think about what are the boundaries that we can set up for ourselves so that we have very clear boundaries. This is our working relationship and this is our business relationship. So whether or not it's kind of closing it down at five o'clock, whether or not it's closing the conversation down at seven o'clock, whether or not it's we don't talk about business on the weekend, think about different ways that you can actually do it. But the idea is that what it does is it really, it's boundaries are so important for our mental health. They're so important for our relationships and they're actually really important for our performance in business. Boundaries literally will serve you in all parts, but the the, the trick to it is you have to kind of clarify with what those boundaries are. So for us, we clarified in terms of boundaries around time and with when we talk about business and with when we stop talking about business. And there's a very clear start and finish. And that allows the brain to kind of relax going, I don't have to worry at 7.30 that my husband's going to be bringing up some kind of issue around with what conversation he had with our accountant. Like, I don't have to worry about that because we're now talking about as husband and wife. Now, are there exceptions to that? Absolutely. And I think one of the things with principles is you have a framework, you figure out with what's going to work for you, but you can also have exceptions to it. You never want ever, anything to be so black and white. You want things to, you want it, you do want to have some flexibility in your structure, but you definitely want to have at least a good structure so that the exceptions are the exceptions and exceptions generally are 10 to 20%. So, but boundaries are really, really important. Um, if, uh, if you're actually thinking about that. So those are the five, everybody. So would I recommend it? Listen, I love it. I absolutely love working with my husband. Um, it is not for everybody. We have had to work out a lot of these different kind of different working styles and rules and communication and boundaries and goals. We've had to work that through. So this is definitely a process, but I wouldn't want to be partners with anybody else. And, you know, he is like an ideal business partner. He's also an ideal husband as well. But, it, you know, it is a good example on it can work beautifully, but you have to be really intentional about it and really kind of lean into it and really kind of hone uh, those skills. So hopefully you've enjoyed everybody. If you've got another topic you would like me to cover, write it down below. Uh, make sure you get our one pager on best practices to accelerate your business. Write down business below. Sign up for our YouTube channel. And I look forward to, uh, to speaking to you at one of our other videos.